Hello everyone, it's Stephen Whiteside here from theuptrend.com with this weekend's edition of Protect Your Portfolio. Well, it's the last long weekend of the summer. I hope you're having a great time. It's uh, it's uh, quite nice and sunny out right now, a little cool, but uh, that's just fine with me. We're not uh, sunbathing or playing in the water today. In this weekend's presentation, let's uh, start off looking at some monthly charts. Month uh, The month of August turned out to be a pretty good month. Uh, we had the S&P 500 up over 2%. Now, we did see some weakness in the NASDAQ during the month, and it was only up 1.1%. Uh, the Russell 2000 did better than that. Uh, then what really worked was all the safety sectors for the month, and that's a little bit of a concern. Uh, it helped the S&P go up, but uh, to know that uh, money was uh, flowing into consumer staples up nearly 6%. Uh, we had real estate stocks up 5.73%, and of course, uh, you know, the real estate sec sector is anticipating lower interest rates in September. Uh, then we had healthcare up over 5%. We had utilities up just under 5%. What didn't work, and I know this is a very small sector of the market, but a lot of our members still follow this sector. Marijuana stocks were down over 12% for the month. We also had oil and gas equipment stocks down over 12%. Uh, looking at metals and mining, down nearly 6%, and then uh, the transportation sector ended the month down 3.52%. Now, coming into the first trading day of September, we don't have any warning bells going off right now. Oh, we've had trouble breaking through resistance. That's a little something to be concerned about, but there's no evidence that the money wants to leave the market in a hurry. So the first thing that has to happen is a daily sell signal then that daily sell signal needs to last long enough to give us a weekly sell signal. And that's when we start to get concerned. And then, of course, we'll also be watching the direction of the VIX. Now, moving on to the Canadian market, uh, the Canadian market didn't perform as well in, in August as the U.S. market did. For the TSX, it was up 1.36%. For the TSX 60, it was only up 0.8%. Uh, for small cap stocks, we were down on the month, as were the micro cap stocks in the venture exchange. So, Canadian market not looking as healthy going into September as the U.S. market. What worked? Well, just like in the U.S. market, real estate stocks were up nicely on the month, anticipating lower interest rates. Uh, we saw bank stocks up 3.36%. We saw the financial sector up 2.63%. And uh, Infotech was up over 2%. That had a lot to do with Shopify moving up sharply during the month. What didn't work? Well, clean technology stocks were down over 6%. We had the uh, base metals down over 5%. The metals and mining sector was down 2.76%. And uh, then we had the energy sector down 2.31% for the month. Now, honorable mentions, well, gold stocks were up on the month, less than 1%, and they've come up to resistance. This is uh, where we peaked out in early 2022. So it's uh, going to be kind of hard for the gold and silver sector to break through that level. And as you can see, things really slowed down in the month of August. So we'll have to keep an eye on that sector. Uh, what uh, worked? Uh, well, the telecom stocks, after making a new low in July, came back in August, up 2.37%. Still not enough to give us a monthly buy signal, but certainly a lot of daily and weekly buy signals going on right now. Next up, let's uh, talk about the fear index or the VIX. Now, there is a VIX for the S&P 500 on Monday. If it were to close above 1754, that would be the first sign that there's going to be some weakness in the market. Now, there's also a VIX for the NASDAQ, and you can see it's at a higher level. So you always anticipate more volatility in technology stocks than you do in the overall market. And then even uh, the uh, Russell 2000 has a VIX, and again, it's a little more elevated. You expect more volatility in the mid-cap stocks than you do in the big-cap stocks in the S&P 500. All three of these VIX in indexes are on daily sell signals at the moment. Now, the trouble that we have at, at right now is that the weekly VIX is still on a weekly buy signal. It came down over 5% on the week. It uh, closed at 15. We're still looking for a close this coming Friday below 1426. So, Coming into this week, we are still long-term bearish on the market, even though we have all of these buy signals. And the reason we're bearish is look at where we are. We're up at the top of the panic zones for the TSX, for the S&P 500. Uh, the NASDAQ has not recovered as much as those two previous indexes have. Uh, that's also true for the Russell 2000. 
So as a trader, if you're playing the market and you're buying and selling and, and you've moved your money up with the market, uh, you know, this is it's OK to be in the market right now. What isn't OK is to have somebody put new money into the market. So if you won the lottery and uh, you had a bunch of money or you sold a property or sold some asset you've, and you've got a chunk of money, this is not the time and place to put your money into the market. The odds are against you that we're going to be able to go too far higher than we are right now. We're going to take a look at resistance in a few minutes. And uh, also we'll take a look at, uh, you know, the seasonality of the VIX and, and what we expect to happen in September. But uh, right now, you know, this isn't the time and place to put new money in. So yeah, we're long-term bearish on the market. This is the time and place where markets usually peak out. Now, looking at the U.S. market, looking at resistance on the weekly charts, 562.50, you know that number off by heart on the SPY. On the triple Q, we're trying to get to 500, but uh, we're using 468.75 as support at the moment. And so you can see if that breaks down, 437.50 would be our next target. Uh, for the Russell 2000, we're trying to get back up to 225. For small caps, we're trying to get back up to 237.50. And for micro caps, we haven't been able to get back over 125. If we can do that, then 131.25 comes into play. But right now we're stuck at 125. Now, looking at the uh, Magnificent Seven stocks, they were actually down on the week. So we're still on a weekly sell signal for this particular ETF. What's working right now is the financials. They had another big week and up making new highs. And uh, so a lot of money has been going into the financial sector over the past few weeks. Moving on to the Canadian market for the Vanguard Canada ETF, we're looking at resistance up at 48.44. For the iShares for the TSX 60, we're looking at uh, 35.94 as our next target. Uh, for the small caps, we're looking at uh, 20.31. Uh, you can see we've traded above it several times, so it, once again, we came back and closed below it. Uh, if we can take out 2031, if we can start gapping away from that level, uh, then, of course, uh, 2109 would be our next target to the upside. Looking at the Venture Exchange, we're above the uh, 562.50 level, but uh, we closed lower on the week, so we're using 562.50 as support at the moment. Now, there's a huge spread between the price targets here. And the reason for that is the Venture Exchange is very volatile, but it's not going anywhere. And you can see where, where we are right now. We got here in early 2022. And so the range of the Venture Exchange has come down dramatically, even though the volatility from day to day hasn't reduced at all. So really no direction for the Venture Exchange at the moment. That is a long-term problem, not a short-term problem. Looking at uh, the Equal Weighted Bank ETF, we're looking for 3906 as our next target. For the energy sector, we're stuck in a range here for the past couple of weeks, 1875 on the top, 1797 at the bottom, looking for a breakout of that range. Unfortunately, we've closed lower for the past two weeks. So this coming Friday, uh, if we close below 1778, that would give us a new weekly sell signal. And even though we're on a buy signal, even though we reversed off a bullish reversal signal, uh, the pros never took control, so that's uh, not a pretty picture for the Canadian energy sector. Looking at uh, gold, uh, we're trying to break out above 2344. We hit that target uh, on the previous week, so if you had an order in up there to get filled, congratulations. You've uh, got a partial position filled, so you got to lock in some profits. Uh, this was a down week. We didn't close below the previous week's low. That would be the first sign that something new is going on. Now, the biggest winner on the TSX 60 this week was Algoma Steel. The biggest loser was the Bank of Montreal. Now, last week we did a quick tutorial on the Flypaper channel. And uh, if a market is trading above the Flypaper channel, we consider it to be in a bull market. If it's below, it's in a bear market. And then, of course, you've got that neutral sticky zone where the uh, uh, symbol will get stuck to the Flypaper channel and not be able to break away from it. And then, of course, we talked about looking at the direction of the flypaper channel. It is a long-term indicator, so uh, it takes a lot to move the direction of the flypaper channel. And if we walk through the uh, Canadian banks we looked at last week, we noted that the uh, Bank of Montreal, of course, is below the flypaper channel and stuck to the underside. It was down nearly 5.5% on the week. Uh, the Bank of Nova Scotia was up 2.78%, still in the channel. Uh, so the first sign something new is happening is if we start breaking out the high from early in 2024, 
up there at $70. So if the Bank of Nova Scotia can start moving above 70, hey, maybe something new is happening for this stock. Now, a stock that uh, had a five-star rating going into last week uh, was CIBC, well above the flypaper channel, and it was up over 7% on the week. Similar situation for the National Bank, trading well above the flypaper channel, was up just under 3%. Uh, for the Royal Bank, again, you know, how does the market feel about this stock? Well, just look at it compared to the flypaper channel. It was up 4.41%. And then a stock we really don't have much, uh, uh, you know, hope for at the moment is the TD Bank, and it was up 0.71% on the week, still in the flypaper channel. Let's uh, finish off today's presentation, take a look at the seasonality charts, starting with the VIX. Here's where we are right now. We're coming into September. We usually get an elevation into uh, the end of the first week, and then we get a drop off into the middle of September. And then look what happens after that point. From the middle of the September on into late October, the VIX is usually very elevated. Then it starts to decrease going into year end, and that's the Santa Claus rally that everybody will be looking for. Looking at uh, the seasonality chart of the S&P 500, you can see we uh, don't get a lot of pullback into the middle of September. Then we get a, a run up uh, into the third week and then a sell off into October. So that's what everybody's going to be concerned about. That is also true for the TSX. We get a little dip. Uh, after the first week and then a run up going into the third week of September and then we come down into October. Uh, that's often where we get the crashes that people are concerned about and then we usually get a, a year-end rally which is what we want to catch after the volatility has ceased. Okay folks that is all for this weekend's presentation. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Next time, we're going to spend a little more time on looking at the commodities and commodity sectors going into the rest of the year. Have a great day. Next time you'll hear my voice is on Tuesday morning.